Got quiet. Good evening. I'm going to start. It's 5:31. I'm going to roll. Um, I, tr I try to do things on time and respect people's time. So, first, my name is Jan Pippin, and thank you so much for taking your time to come over here. I know you're busy and it's dinner time, and your kids are hungry and they have homework. So, thank you so much for that. I'm going to try to roll through this as quickly as I can and give you a lot of information and a little bit of flavor of what I hope the spring is going to look like. Um, if you have questions later, you can hang out here, you can email me, call me, I'm happy to answer those questions any way that um, works for you. So um, first I'm going to run through really quickly the staff that's going to be coaching your sons on the track team this spring. Um, we have a new staff member in alumni development named Mary Angel, and Mary threw shot and disc at the University of Kentucky and she finished her career at the 2012 Olympic trials. So we are thrilled to have her on campus. Um, so she's gonna be working with our throwers along with Dion Kufer, who's also back on campus this year. He graduated from NBA, played football at Rhodes. Um, so Dion and Mary are gonna be both coaching throws. So those are both new additions to our staff this year and I'm really thrilled about that. Um, the boys are too, if you ask them. Um, then we have, uh, Coach Cirillo, Coach Naramore, Coach Perry, Coach Pruitt, Coach Russ, Coach Sanders are all back with us. Those are all the same from years past. And our meat management team, uh, Dr. Bray, Mr. Compton, and, and Mr. Deutsch, um, and they are the ones that make our track meets amazing. So I've already told the boys at our meeting last uh, on Tuesday they need to say thank you every single meet because you don't go to meets that are run more smoothly than the meets at NBA. And um, it's because of those three people that that happened. So pretty thankful for all of them. So those are the people that are gonna be with your sons every day starting Monday. Um, so we talked a little bit on Tuesday about commitment and I'm gonna share a little bit of that with you. We asked them to do their absolute best to be at practice every day and to put these, these meet dates in their family planner right away so that um, they were available for all of those meets. And we talked um, about I, something that I take really seriously is knowing where the boys are um, f as, as much for their safety as for anything else. They're convinced that I just want to give them demerits. But um, the truth is that if you expect for me to know where they are after school, then I'm going to know where they are after school. And I want to know they're safe. And if they're not at practice and they didn't tell me they weren't going to be at practice and they were not on the absentee sheet, then they're unexcused absent and I have to go find out where they are because I want to know they're safe. And I explained that to them on Tuesday. I said, if you, if you had a medical emergency in the parking lot or in the locker room or God forbid someone stole you and drove off with you and I didn't go looking for you, then at seven o'clock when you don't get home, your mom's gonna wanna know, why didn't you go looking for my son when he wasn't at practice? So, I mean business about that. If I have to leave, and by the way, there are 112 boys on the NBA track roster right now, which is amazing. <laughs> but if I have to leave 111 to go look for the 112th one, I will, but I'm not gonna be nice when I find them. Just saying. So I explained to them in, in great detail that when they sign out sick or when they sign out for a doctor appointment, we don't always get notified that. I see the absentee sheet in the morning. So if they're not at school in the morning, I know that. But if they leave during the day sick, I don't get, notifi I don't get a notification about that. And I have no way of knowing that they left school. So I ask them if they're at all able to please take one second and email me that they went home sick. If they have a doctor appointment after school and they're at school all day and they're leaving at 310 for a doctor appointment, I need to know that so I don't go looking for them. So I know they think that's very unreasonable, but I tell them all the time that I love them and I would never get over it if something happened to one of them and I didn't, I didn't check on them. So um, I'm going to check on them and they're going to hate it and I'm going to do it anyway. But if you could help me with that, if they're going to miss practice or if they come home sick, if you could help them remember that if they're too sick to do it, if you could do it, I just want to know where they are. So practice every day. And if they're not at practice, I need to know they're not at practice and that you know they're not at practice. Um, 
So uh, there's, if you didn't get a meet, schedule, a meet schedule there by the door and you can pick up one on the way out, um, most of our meets are during the week. Um, the, the, one, the one meet that's a Saturday meet is our own Doug Hall relays that we host here on Friday and Saturday. And at that meet, all of our team is either competing or working. It takes all of our team to make that meet successful. So um, if they're not competing or if they compete early in the day, they might be asked to work later in the day. So um, they all need to try to keep that um, April 15th clean, uh, available if they can. Um, the, the problem with April 15th is that's an ACT day. Uh, and so I'm going to beg you to please consider st signing up your boys for the March 28th ACT here at school during the school day, if you're able, instead of them having to miss that track meet to take the ACT. If you have no other option, I need to know as early as possible that they have to take the ACT on April 15th. So um, most, most of the other meets are during the week, uh, so hopefully we can... Hopefully we can make all those other meets work. We talked about goals the other day and we'll continue to talk about goals, but I have a goal for my team that I'm gonna share with you and I haven't really even shared this with them this year yet, but individual improvement is a cool thing about track. You, you can get a time in the 100 and then next week get another time in the 100 and the next week get another time in the 100 and even if you're not winning, um, you still see whether you are improving and meeting the goals that you set for yourself. Uh, same is true in the weight room. Uh, we, set, we set lifting goals and we set running goals, and sometimes they're not even a, an end of the race time. Sometimes, um, sometimes a miler is going to set a goal to get through 1,200 meters of his 600, 1,600 meters at a particular time, even if he's not strong enough to complete the whole mile at that time yet. So individual goals are important. Um, I want to see them all Im improving personally. So um, my goal is is to help them set some goals like that that they can they can achieve. And um, I'm going to challenge them to be all in every day. You can't have a couple of good days and then take a day off and then have a couple of good days, take a day off and expect the results that you want to see. And so we're going to talk about daily commitment. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to try to hold their feet to the fire to put their best put their best out there every single day. Um, our coaching staff's amazing. They're all really positive people. Uh, so hopefully we can get that going early. Um, I'm going to do some team building things. One of them is on the schedule. Ooh, that's loud. One of them is on the schedule. We're going to do a day of service. It's not even a whole day of service, but on um, February 20, 25th, uh, we're going to go do the Harpeth Conservancy work in the morning on that Saturday morning. I'm going to send them an email soon and ask them to RSVP if they're able to come and do that. We're going to work two hours that morning. That's things like pulling up weeds that don't belong, planting trees, cleaning up creek beds. It's, it's kind of dirty work, but um, we've done some kind of service day every year for the past two or three years. The boys have a blast together. I'll bring them breakfast. We'll eat together. We'll work for two hours. And um, I just think it's important that we get out and do something else to get to know each other and to see that there are other things going on except what's, what's happening right here on this campus. So we're gonna go do that with as many of them as a, are able. Um, and I'm also gonna do a few other things to try to, to, to build some camaraderie with them. I'm gonna try to pick a lacrosse game and a baseball game and a, a soccer match for us to go to as a team, like after practice maybe. So I'll we'll try to take as many of them as we can and stay and support their their friends and classmates that are in other sports in the spring. So we'll try to do that. And um, we will, uh, we'll, there are a few other things that we do like at practice that we'll try to work on things like that to, to support their, their team, their teammates. Um, okay, so daily schedules. If you're new to track or if you're new to NBA track, we try to be finished we, we're finished between 5 and 5.30, usually by 5. So if you have a, an athlete who's not a driver and you need to know what time to be here, um, we are normally done around 5. As the weather gets better and we get more daylight, if we're working on long jump and high jump and those kinds of things, we might spend a little more time out on the track once the weather warms up and, and we have more daylight. But 
We're, um, we're always done by 5.30. There's no reason for them to be here longer than that. Right now, the, um, the sprinters are running three workouts every week. We're in the weight room three times a week with the sprinters and the throwers. Uh, the distance runners are running three workouts a week. They're in the weight room twice a week. Uh, so uh, I think that'll, if you have a, a football son, the, the football players right now have the option of either continuing on the football lift that they get on their phones from Coach Brock, or they can do the track lift. That I, I leave that completely up to them. And that will continue to be the case until we get well into the competition season. There will be a couple of weeks late in the season where they'll have to pull off a little bit so that they feel um, refreshed enough to be at their best for our biggest competitions. But for the most part, if they're also gearing up for another football season, I, I encourage them to stick with that um, that lifting program. So, uh, so, so yeah, you can if you don't if they don't drive, you can pick them up by about 5:30 every day. Um, If you've never been to a track meet, track meets normally on what are run on what's called a rolling schedule. And that means that they set a start time and an order of events. And then the track meet just moves as quickly as they can move. So um, for if, honestly, if you ask me, what time is the mile going to run? I am the worst at projecting what time races are going to happen. Roderick Russ is a master at it. So if you need to know what time your child is going to run or approximately what time your child might run a particular race, have them ask Coach Russ, not me. Um, I get so caught up in them and what's going on and how they're running, and I spend so much time at races watching how I can help them get better for the next race that I, I'm never aware of what time it is or how much time passes between races, and so um, I'm not the right person to ask about that. But... Um, this, so normally at our meets, what I'll do with you is I try to remember to send our lineup in an email to you before our meet so that you can see what your sons are running. That looks like a big spreadsheet, has all the events down the side and all the names um, listed. Um, you might notice that sometimes it looks a little crazy. Your son might, run, might be running two races that are back to back or they might be running races they don't normally run. Um, what I want you to know about our, our schedule is all of the weekly races that we run are just for race, race experience. It's not like other sports where your um, win-loss record controls whether you go to the postseason. Um, none of that affects whether we can go to the city. None of that affects whether we can go to the region. So all of our Wednesday meets that are here, they're really just to gain race experience and for us to figure out how we can be at our best for city, region, and state. So you will see all kinds of crazy combinations of races in your, in your son's lineups during our weekly meets. We use those sometimes at, to get an extra workout in during the week. So sometimes they're going to run races really close together because I don't want them recovered when they run the next one because I'm trying to get them in a little better shape. Sometimes they're going to run a race that they've never run before because I'm trying to figure out, who, again, how can we be at our best for city and region and state? So um, we rotate them around a lot of really weird-looking things at our weekly meets. Something you can help me with on that is the rule says they can't do more than four events at a meet. So if you look at one of those lineups and your son's name is in five or six races, I would really appreciate you saying, um, my son's in six, which four do you want him to do? <laughs> because, again, with 112 of them, I'm going to make some mistakes. Um, if you look at that lineup and your son's not on it at all, that's also probably a mistake. And I would love for you to tell me that as well. Um, I'm not going to get mad. <laughs> I would rather get it fixed. So, um, so we'll, we'll be switching them around a lot. And I'm happy to answer questions about thought processes if you ever see anything weird and, you, and you're interested or want to understand. Um, on the meet schedule, the week of the city meet, the city meet is a three-day meet at Harpeth Hall. The two days during the week are, are, would be 4.30 starts, and then the finals on Friday or Friday night, and I, I actually don't have the, the exact times of those yet. I'll update the schedule and let you know when I know any, anything like that that I wasn't able to get. 
Also on the schedule, the grade eight invitational, that's a meet you have to qualify into, and it has question marks next to the date because they, they have not set a date or a location for that meet. They were trying to use Father Ryan. Father Ryan's AD said no, they don't, I don't know. So it will be the week that it's listed, but I don't know what day of that week. Um, so there will be a, some, a few adjustments like that that I'll have to let you know about um, later. I'm going to come back to the schedule in a minute. Um, I'm going to move on to some other things first. Uh, when they come into the weight room, they're told that they should wear NBA gear in the NBA weight room. Sometimes that's enforced and sometimes that's not enforced. But I have asked them to either be in NBA gear or NBA colors when they come to practice so that when we go into the weight room, we're compliant. So if you could make sure they have on an NBA t-shirt, I don't care what NBA t-shirt, as long as it's an NBA t-shirt or an NBA colored shirt, um, that would be great. That way we don't have any problems when we're in the weight room. Um, I'm going to give them soon an NBA hoodie. Um, we're going to give them one their first year on the team and then their third year on the team. Everyone will get one this year and then going forward their first and third year on the team, they'll get a hoodie, and that will be theirs to keep up with in the in between time. They're also going to get a t-shirt from me to train in. Um, we give them a pair of compression shorts to race in. If their compression shorts from last year still fit, it'd be great if they didn't take another pair, because I don't think they need a whole drawer full of them. Um, I've already told them that too, and they giggled, but um, they're going to have compression shorts that are black that they race in. They will be issued a team jersey that they race in, and the jerseys have to be returned to me. So they're told that over and over and over, that they're responsible for their jersey and it has to be returned. They all have a number on the tag on the inside of the jersey, so I keep up with what numbers they have. So when they return them, I check in their jersey under their name, and it's theirs to, to keep up with. Um, on the subject of gear, there's a... We ran a NBA track and field gear store back in December, and um, there's another one that's going to drop tomorrow. So tomorrow morning you'll get another email with a link. You're not required to spend any money in that store, but if your son wants gear or if you want gear, you can order it tomorrow. That store will run for a week. That gear should be delivered to your home. Um, that's not always the case, but it's supposed to be. <laughs> So that's going to happen tomorrow. Um, I, I try not to bombard you with emails, but I, I'm, I'm a pretty decent communicator, so um, I will communicate with you through email. We also have a membership through one of our MBA parents to, through a company called um, Slick Text. And the great thing about Slick Text is that if I send out a, te a group text, and someone responds, only I see the response. So it's not like group meet and all those where once something starts, the boys are allowed, able to be in a, inappropriate with a whole group of people. So um, anyway, your phone numbers, if you have them on file with Scholar, in Scholar or in the NBA directory, are on a list, and your sons are on a list. So if you get some weird text from a weird number that has NBA track information, it's me. Um, I'll try to identify myself, but I'm not limited on the number of characters I can put in a text. So it, it will be just short reminders. Um, like for them, it'll be, if something changes, I'll remind them we're meeting somewhere different or something like that. But, um, so I do have access to that and email. Um, some of your boys are gonna be sore over the next few days. There's a difference between soreness and injuries. Anytime you change sports from one sport to the next, there is some soreness involved because no matter what kind of great shape you're in for one sport, when you change exercises and you change drills and you change warm-ups, things get a little achy for a few days. If you're not sure whether your son has an injury or soreness, we are all happy to evaluate them and we have amazing staff in our training room. So please don't hesitate to ask or send them to the training room or have them ask one of us. Um, uh, sometimes if you, and please don't be mad if you're a pediatrician, 
But sometimes if you take your son to the pediatrician, they're going to tell them to sit down and rest for six weeks. Teenage boys usually don't need to sit down and rest for six weeks. So sometimes if they do need a doctor, taking them to a sports doctor will keep them more active and help get them back quicker than just sitting down and watching for six weeks. And I'm not saying they should run when they're hurt, but, but oftentimes that's the first line of, of defense for a, a, a childhood doctor is they just tell them they need to rest. And so um, if you're able to see a sports doctor, if they do sustain an injury, we're a whole lot more likely to get them back quickly. Um, but again, our trainers are, are great here. Okay, I'm gonna hurry. How can you help? You can be there. Try to be at as many meets as you can be at. Just be there, it's important to them. They're gonna tell you it's not, but it is. And they're gonna probably tell you don't come, but it really matters to them. So be here. Um, uh, what else? You can require that they take a shower as soon as they get home. <laughs> I'm serious. Make them go get clean before they eat dinner. Um, <laughs> you laugh, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> they'll feel better, they'll eat better, they'll rest better, they'll study better, they'll probably stay healthier. So make them go get clean. Um, shoes. I've already had some questions about shoes. The, the exterior of a tennis shoe holds up a lot longer than the interior of a tennis shoe. So um, the, a good rule of thumb for runners is that they get a new pair of shoes every season, fall, winter, spring, summer. Um, we're concerned about the support system that's in the shoe, not the, what the shoe looks like. So if your son comes to practice in a shoe that they've been wearing for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to play basketball and go to the mall and whatever else he does, there's a good chance that the support system in the shoe is breaking down and that doesn't protect their knees and their shins and their ankles. And we start to have overuse injuries that we could have avoided. So. Um, it's really important to have them in a good pair of shoes. I don't have a particular brand or a particular model because every foot is different. So if you're not sure about that, there are, there are a couple of stores where um, the salespeople are trained in fitting your feet. Um, uh, Team Nashville right down the street by Vanderbilt is good about that. Fleet Feet is good about that. Um, but just whatever shoe fits your athlete's foot is the right shoe for your athlete. So um, once you find one that works, then find some discount running online store and just keep ordering the same shoe. That's, that's the best way to do that once you find one that works well for your, for your son. Um, I require the sprinters and the throwers to show up every day in a hoodie and pants. They don't like it. Um, but. I tell them they don't get to decide, and I don't want to hear, well, I thought it was going to be warm today. Um, they don't get to choose. So distance runners are crazy. They go off and, and run in the cold with little and nothing on. Um, but sprinters and, sprinters and throwers warm up in full gear every day. If it's warm enough, we take it off after that when we start to, to work out. So um, they need pants and a hoodie every single day if they're a thrower or a sprinter or a jumper. Um, as much as you can, encourage them to eat properly. I'm gonna bring in a nutritionist. I don't have the date set yet, but I'm gonna bring in somebody to talk to them about what to eat on a training day, what to eat on race day, how much to eat, what to eat if they're trying to gain weight and train, what to eat if they're trying to cut weight and train. Um, but if you could just keep them eating a balanced diet and drinking enough water, that'd be great. Um, as much as you can, encourage them to get enough sleep. Send snacks with them on meat day. Um, having some snacks in their bag when we're out of meat will really help them. Um, and the, the big things that I need from, from parents, there are a couple of things that, that are actually um, things that you could help me with are, um, we have a, we had mom, um, Susan, she's here, right? You're here? Last year, Susan Dean coordinated us having food at the bigger meats and the meats that lasted all day and that was an incredible help um, there aren't that many of those maybe scott scott hartman relays doug hall relays region um, so susan coordinated us having just a table full of snacks she actually coordinated us having dinner before the regional finals 
So if, if, if you're good at coordinating, um, I would love somebody to work with me on making sure the boys have snacks and food to eat at the meets that last all day. Um, and then we have a picnic in the summer right after school lets out. It's on your schedule for June 3rd. I, it's really informal, but school's out and they're so over being here that I don't want to stay here and have a banquet in the dining hall. So last summer we had a, a pool party at Jackson Talent's backyard and we had Stroud's barbecue and they pushed me in the pool and it was fun. <laughs> So if you have a backyard and you're willing to host that at the end of the year, that's a way that you can actively help. Um, so somebody to order, uh, organize food at the meets and then somebody to host that are the two like big things that you could do to, to actively help. And other than that, just supporting your sons, helping me with attendance, making sure they're dressed properly, all those kinds of things are, are really the big things that you can help with. Um, okay, so I might be done two minutes under an hour. So if you have questions, I'm happy to help answer your questions. If you want to email me later, call me later, you're more than welcome to do that. If you didn't get a schedule, there's still some on the table about the back. Um, anybody have a question that everybody might be interested in? Ms. Sprockman. Okay. Great question, and I have that on my paper and I skipped it. So the meets that we have here, our goal is to be done before dark. Our goal is to be done before dark. We don't always make it, but our goal is to be done before dark. Speaking of, our scrimmage, that's something else that I need help with. Our scrimmage on March 8th. Last year we had a team mixer after that. Some dads grilled out, and we just stayed right up there on that patio at the end of the um, bleachers, and we had a really informal dinner together. So, again, if you're a good coordinator, I would love somebody to organize a team mixer on March 8th, right before spring break. So those are things you can think about and let me know later. Um, but yeah, so our goal for all of our meets is to be done by dark. The only weekly meet we're gonna run away is at Lipscomb, and they are fairly good about keeping their meets running too. So that shouldn't be one that drags on. Um, we're gonna run at the city meet at Harpeth Hall. We're gonna run, uh, I guess that's the only ones we're gonna run away until we get to the state. So. Yeah, anybody else got a question that everybody would be interested in? State is going to be back at MTSU. Yeah. State decathlon at Brentwood Academy and state track meet at MTSU. Anybody else? Okay, well, thanks for coming. Please don't hesitate to ask me questions. <laughs>